learn about the topic that is uh, the determination of uh, sludge density index and sludge volume index okay so this experiment is basically a bench lab uh, experiment where you need uh, a very small kind of uh, i mean uh, you know the devices or you can say uh, accessories okay so now we'll go into uh, deep what is MLSS what is MLVSS versus SVIS and SDI okay so our main topic is to understand the meaning of the terminologies so the sludge volume index is nothing but a factor that is used to I mean uh, assess or measure in a wastewater treatment process and this is a uh, called a sludge volume index okay and this can be find out using certain kind of uh, i mean uh, calculation mathematical calculations so we have to find out for first of all find out the circulability, uh, circulability uh, test of the sludge that is in the activated sludge mix mix leaker okay you can say mix leaker suspended solids and the mix leaker suspended solids uh, is the same concept that we find out the total suspended solids in uh, i mean in water or waste water okay so uh, the term mixed liquor suspended solids uh, result is uh, like you can say this will come up with a number of index that will really describe the ability of the sludge to settle and to um, uh, out or, count or compact and the sludge volume index gives a more accurate picture of the sludge settling characteristics Okay, and SVI can indicate the changes occurring in an activated sludge process or treatment, and uh, it would also tell you the sludge slit settleability uh, in the final clarifier, or you can say the secondary clarifier. And by the definition, at the SVI is the volume of the settled sludge in milliliters occupied by one gram of dry sludge solids after 30 minutes of settling in a one liter graduated cylinder or you can say a settleometer so we have to take a one liter of the leaker sample or a mixed leaker mixed leaker sample and then we have to add that in a imhoff cone and then we have to wait for around half an hour to 45 minutes that will depend on the amount of solids that is pre present in the leaker mixed leaker and then we would find out the settleability in terms of milliliters so this can be com uh, computed by or calculated by the result of the settling test in milliliters per liter so, so we have to find out how much amount of sludge has settled down that's called the height basically and the sdi is nothing but it will tell you the settleability of sludge in a secondary clarifier or a final clarifier that is related to the calculation for svi so the weight in grams of 100 milliliter of sludge after settling for 30 minutes so SDI is nothing but 100 upon SVI so you can see that SDI is inversely proportional to SVI the common range for an SVI at a conventional or you can say a traditional set uh, activated sludge plant should be between 50 to 150 and SDI is is used like the SVI to determine the sludge settling characteristics and also the return sludge pumping rates so the most operational range for SDI is 1 to 2.5 and SVI and SDI, SDI both will relate the weight of the sludge to the volume that the sludge occupies and attempts to show how well the activated sludge separates from the mix leaker. Slow the sludges with a low SVI or a high SDI because they are uh, inversely proportional have a good settling and compaction characteristics and SDI is used like the SVI to determine the sludge settling characteristics and returns sludge pumping rates. So if the sludge settling is very low, too low, so this can uh, yield or uh, result in a loss of suspended solids over the clarifier V years which are at the top. Okay. And if the SVI settles too quickly and SVI is less than 50, so this can be any point to the pin flock which is commonly caused by old sludge when the sludge becomes old and it is recommended to perform the SVI test every day when we are treating the I mean the wastewater usually using a activated sludge process or a sewage sludge process 
and it is also very very critical or imperative to determine the SVI for 30 minutes as well as occasionally it will also depend more when the amount of solids is more in the mix leaker so the majority of the settings that should occur within the first 30 minutes if there is a change in our SVI so it is recommended to perform not all the setting uh, I mean test we can also perform the microscopic evaluation I mean if there are other organisms in the water like we can find out the uh, I mean the E. coli or coliform test or other kind of microbial test so it is uh, it is also useful to leave this in the container and observe there is a rise time I mean the time is rising or not and eventually and sometimes also happens that some of the solids will not settle and it will tend to float I mean it will not go down because their specific gravity will be uh, not higher it will be lower so this may indicate there is there is a denitrification and if the rise time is less than two hours there is a risk of floating sludge in the clarifier so we have to take the steps to reduce the nitrate and, and the BOD and increase the oxygen and we have to I mean do the aeration in the uh, you can say in the primary clarifier so now to the test for doing the SVI we to I told you earlier we have to take a settling I mean a jar or in half cone and then we have to wait for a certain time so that the sludge settle down. this is the formula for SVI so certain sludge volume what is the volume upon the mixed leaker suspended solid it's the same procedure uh, the way we used to do the total suspended solids we have to take this sludge okay I mean the mixed leaker where there is a leaker then we will use a filter paper okay first of all we have to dry the filter and take the initial weight of the filter and then we have to I mean uh, filter either using a vacuum filtration technique or a gravity technique and then we have to find out and that filter the mixed leaker suspended solids so dividing the two terminologies and multiplying by thousand we will know the SVI and SDI is 100 upon SVI so in this way we can find out the I mean the uh, SVI the term SVI now the common procedure is that we have to take a mixed leaker and then we have to let the, the sample set for 30 minutes this is already I have told you then we will now talk about how to determine the uh, MLSS this is the same procedure you have to find out the total suspended solids in the leaker now for MLVSS what we have to do we have to take the same filter that we use to find out for the mixed leaker suspended solids and then we have to take the filter and put into the muffle furnace or you can say the furnace which is operating at higher temperature so we have to set the temperature of the muffle furnace first of all before putting our sample at 550 degrees C and then we have to put that filter after dehydration into the crucible or usually you can use a watch glass and then you have to take the filter after after heating up to one hour and then you have to cool it down then take the final weight so this difference between the I mean the uh, I mean before putting into the uh, muffle furnace and the the ignition weight obviously there would be a loss of weight so this difference would give you the term that is called MLVSS so usually the MLSS concentration for I mean the active discharge plants varies from 2000 to 4000 milligrams per liter whereas MLVSS is an indirect measurement of the concentration of microorganisms or you can say the organic matter in the aeration tank and MLVSS is usually 70 to 80 percent of the MLSS value, MLSS value. so obviously from the uh, I mean the, the the definition the MLVSS value will be lower than the MLSS so now the ML uh, SVI is if SVI is less than 80 milligram milliliters per gram so this usually uh, I mean uh, designate the sludge is dense and has the rapid settling characteristics and this is often attributed to old over oxidized sludge and this is uh, usually seen in extended aeration facility and the flux particle would be dense and their shape would be granular so as this type of sludge setters it may leave a cloudy appearance in the supernatant on the top layer above the setters blanket so this turbidity is uh, called pinpoint flock or pin flock and if this SVI lies between 100 to 200 then this kind of uh, I mean activated sludge plants uh, will produce a clear good quality effluent with an SVI in this range the sludge typically settles more slowly and traps more particulate matter and it forms a uniform blanket before settling so in this case you have to take the microscopic examination of the leaker 
samples okay and or you can also oxidize the samples you can provide aeration now if the SVI is more than 250 ml per gram so this indicates there is a very high SVI and the sludge will settle very slowly and it will have a poor settleability test so the MLSS looks light fluffy not very dense so there are several regions the SVI may high it's not one reason okay and a high SVI may also indicate filamentous sludge bulking in this case the micro or microscopic examination is highly recommended okay and uh, or the filaments may be contained within the flock causing a dispersed open flock structure in this case a liquid above the sludge blanket is usually very clear the sludge can sit in the settleable disk container for long periods and settle very little not or not at all there could be no settling at all so now this is the formula for finding out the SVI as we saw a um, uh, up Okay. Now these are different type of sludge. This is a young sludge which will have a poor settleability. Right sludge will have a good settleability. And these are different kind of, I mean the rotifers are different kind of, I mean microorganism present in the sludge. This is an old sludge will, will have a poor settleability. So for the experiment point of view on the observation table, first of all, we have to note down the volume of the sample and this is the SVI, SDI, MLSS and MLVSS values. So usually we should do the experiment, I mean, uh, in triplicate so that to avoid error or to get the approximate value of the uh, above, above, you know, the uh, terminologies that are mentioned in the observation table. So this is the how we, I mean, what is the meaning of the three or four terminologies and how